Welcome to our virtual Vesper service. It is good to be with you all. We share this time every Thursday at 5.30 on Zoom with rotating leadership. Attendees will remain muted throughout the service tonight. We will be recording uh, the session, so if you don't want to be on camera, just go ahead and click stop video. If we encounter any technical difficulties or if you can't hear or see something you think you're supposed to, just send us a message in the box, in the chat box, and it is a live service. So let's offer one another grace if any problems arise and we can use the time for part of our contemplative practice. Here, during this time we share, you are invited to be present, to set aside whatever may be keeping you from, from this time. This is time to give to yourself. So please get comfortable, however that is for you. Of the five traditional monastic prayers, Vespers is the evening prayer shared at sunset. It is a time for us to change the pace of the day as we settle into the evening and we relax. A time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset. In honor of Maundy Thursday, our music this evening will be traditional Christian choral and Gregorian chants. I encourage you to turn off any electric light other than your computer, allow the natural light into your room, and we will begin with centering music, The Lamb by the Tenebrae Choir.
Our chalice lighting this evening comes from the Reverend Andrew Pakula, Afraid of the Dark. In sightless night, terrors draw near, nameless fears of talon and tooth. Hopelessness yawns before us an abyss alone and unknown in the gloom. Longing for the dawn, O sacred flame blaze forth, wisdom brought to life. Guide us with the light of hope, the warmth of love, the beacon of purpose and meaning. Because we are all afraid of the dark, let there be light. We will now light our candles of joy and concern. They represent those emotions that are present with us in the silence today. Together, let's take a deep breath in and out. As you continue to breathe deeply, please bring into your hearts any sorrows or joys that you are carrying with you this week as we hold this space for our community and the world. First, a candle of joy. May we give thanks for the breath of life, the warmth of community, and the light of hope. A candle for our sorrows. May we honor the darkness of grief, allow the pain to wash over and through us, and may we be reminded that to experience suffering is to be alive. And finally, a candle for the world. May we be ever mindful to love one another without exception so that our love may bridge the divides which keep us separated from one another. And may our love heal the world. Let us take a moment in silent reflection and we will end with the ringing of the singing bowl. This evening, our Vespers service will be a, a UU version of the Christian Tenebrae service. UU Minister Reverend Parisa Parsa says that Tenebrae is the most Buddhist of Christian services. 
letting the truth of suffering be laid bare, inviting us to look at it unflinchingly and asking us to see that we are not separate from it. Tenebrae means darkness, and the service typically includes candles and the recitation of passages from the Bible, depicting Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane to his final moments on the cross. UU minister Reverend Robin Bartlett describes Tenebrae as a prolonged meditation of Christ's suffering. She says that the power of the silence and darkness suggests the drama of this momentous day. As lights are extinguished, we ponder the depth of Christ's suffering and death. And through the return of the small but persistent flame of the Christ candle at the conclusion of the service, we anticipate the joy and ultimate victory. This evening, we will have modern readings, followed by extinguishing of candles and quiet moments of contemplation. We will end with the biblical reading of, from Matthew of Christ's death on the cross. Once we extinguish our final candle, we will rest in the darkness and silence, holding the suffering of the world in our hearts until a single candle is rekindled. In this case, our chalice, symbol of our faith, a beacon of light in a world so deeply in need of our healing message of justice, acceptance, and love. Our first reading is The Companionable Dark by the Reverend Kathleen Norris from Little Girls in Church. The brooding dark are most vulnerable hours, limbs loose in sleep, mouths agape. The faithful dark, where each door leads each one of us alone. The dark of God come close as breath, our one companion all the way through. The dark of a needle's eye, not the easy dark of dusk candles, but dark from which comforts flee. The deep down dark of one by one, dark of wind and dust, dark in which stars burn, the floodwater dark of hope. Jesus in agony in the garden. Esther pacing her bitter palace. A dark by which we see dark, like truth, like flesh and bone. Help me who am alone and have no help but thee.
Our second reading is I Am Waiting by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I am waiting for the last supper to be served again with a strange new appetizer. And I am perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for my number to be called and I am waiting for the Salvation Army to take over. And I am waiting for the meek to be blessed and inherit the earth without taxes. And I am waiting for forests and animals to reclaim the earth as theirs. And I am waiting for a way to be devised to destroy all nationalisms without killing anybody. And I am waiting for linnets and planets to fall like rain. And I'm waiting for lovers and weepers to lie down together again in a new rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting for the great divide to be crossed, and I'm anxiously waiting for the secret of eternal life to be discovered by an obscure general practitioner. And I am waiting for the storms of life to be over. And I am waiting to set sail for happiness. And I am waiting for the last long careless rapture and I am perpetually waiting for the fleeing lovers on the Grecian urn to catch each other up at last and embrace. And I am waiting perpetually and forever a renaissance of wonder. Being the Resurrection, Reverend Victoria Weinstein. The stone has got to be rolled back from the tomb again and again every year. Roll up your sleeves. He is not coming back, you know. He is not coming back unless it is we who rise for him. We who lay healing hands on the reviled and the rejected like he did. We who lay healing hands on the reviled and the rejected like he did and on his behalf. We who rage for righteousness 
in his insistent voice. We who love the sinner, even knowing that the sinner is no farther off than our own heartbeat. He will not be back to join us at the table, to share God's extravagant banquet, God's love feast. All are invited, come as you are. And so it is, you and I must feast for him, must say the grace and break the bread and pass it to the left and dish up the broiled fish or pour the wine and pass it to the right and treat each one so tenderly as though just this morning she or he made the personal effort to make it back from heaven or from hell, but certainly from death to be by our side. Because if by some miracle, and why not a miracle, he did come back, wouldn't he want to see us like this? Wouldn't it be a miracle to live for just one day? So that if he did by some amazing feat come riding into town, he could take a look around and say, this is what I meant. And we could say, it took us a long time, but we finally figured it out. Oh, let us live to make it so. You are the resurrection and the life. And from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27, verses 43 through 51. The chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. 
At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah comes and will save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last breath. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. <laughs> 